right. So um, a few of you have said that already when it was your turn to speak, you felt your heart beating in your th in your throat and kind of just like oh you kind of blacking a little bit out yeah can you can you re relate to that a little bit yeah okay i have that i'm a facilitator since 10 years i'm a practitioner of tantra since 20 a few years and i was thinking one day i need to fix and heal that Anybody else thinks you need to fix and heal that? <laughs> All what we need to fix and heal is getting comfortable. So, so, so we need to we need to fix and heal that we're not comfortable with that. Yeah. So, getting comfortable with not being comfortable. That's 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 an it's an important piece. So, whatever you feel here, tears and laughter and anger and uh, joy, whatever comes up is welcome here. So um, by saying that um, um, stuff will come up and just be with it. And that's the nature of it, specifically in this work. So um, this call is about 90 minutes. The first third is gone, 30 minutes. And I will guide you for about 15, 20 minutes in some slides. I want to guide you how that all works with feelings and the shadows and what the shadows are and how to find the shadows. And then we see if we have a kind of um, enough time for a little open um, communication about that. So um, I asked already shadow, shadow work who likes the shadow work. I've seen a lot of hands. <laughs> And the shadows are, they are not wrong, they're not bad. I want, to, I want to say that in the first place, we all have them, we all need them, and they're all there for a reason. And specifically when you look into um, um, Tantra or spiritual work, um, many people think, we, or in the armoring, for example, as well, we have to break them open. We have to break through. We have to break free from them that we finally um, not feeling them anymore. And of course, it's a lifelong work to integrate them, but there's nothing to fix or to heal. They're just there. So one of the most challenging thing that I feel in this body of work is spiritual bypassing. Okay, I'm nearly enlightened. I'm nearly there. I don't have any shadows anymore. Anybody else has no shadows? <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much work we do. It doesn't matter how old we get. We are there was a package and this package is a survival strategy that has formed our personality so our ego or our rational thinking mechanism works because we need it somehow to survive and adapt ourselves to certain situations there were somehow life-threatening to us and sometimes before we could think, before we could speak. So it's, it's like so very there, like asking a fish, what is water? Well, there is no water. I have no shadows. I, I have no shadows. The funny thing is I can't see them myself, but everybody else can see them. <laughs> And the same for you. If you think you have no shadows, just hang out a little while with me. <laughs> so we all have them, we all need them. The important piece is that we need to welcome them and we need to allow them and we need to integrate them. And I have not found any better way than in this work of somatic consent. And that's that's why I do that. 
it's liberating, it's freeing, it's transformative, and uh, it has changed my life and has changed many others uh, in a very good way. And when the shadows come up, I promise you, they feel shit. You don't want to feel them. Because most of the time, the light threatening experience that were responsible for creating them, they have not felt very pleasant. So I give you one little example. And I just posted that the other day on my Facebook wall. Um, in the age of, I was think maybe five or so, I was with my father in a cafe and he asked me um, what I want to eat. And I, I said, I want to have two German breads, the, we call them Brötchen, so they have this size, with strawberry jam. And he ordered them. And what came was, you know, you, 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 you got this Brötchen cut in half, and then you have four slides. But I just only want to have two of this with strawberry jam, not four of them. So I was sitting in front of this plate and I had four and I was eating two and then I was done. And then he said, just like eat that. You ordered that. And I said, I can't. And I said, you have to eat that. You ordered that because if you don't eat that, then I will cut your pocket money. And I remember I was sitting there crying, kind of swallowing <laughs> sweet strawberry brötchen down my throat, not getting ripped off my pocket money. That was just popping up the other day. And, you know, now I can just feel uh, uh, into it and, and, and I'm, 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 I'm good at that. Um, and, um, you know, I have a very good relationship with my dad and I look back and so he, he died about I don't know, um, 14, 15 years ago. But the sensation was in my memory as if it was just there. Can everybody relate to that? Yeah. So it's, and this is with pretty much every situation that we had in life. So um, I, I guess each and one of you has your own story. Each and one of you has your own experience of have to do something against your will where you can't or where you don't want to say no. And you learn to go along and that is start getting stored in your body, right? So welcome them. Hallelujah. We all survived. We are here. Great. We made it. And how can we move on in an empowered way? And instead of being reactive, how can we empower other people that they can move on when they are getting triggered with something? Hey, you're welcome with your shadow. It's okay to feel what you feel. All your feelings are okay. And your emotions are good too. So I um, would like to drop into slides soon. Is there any question, anything that anybody would like to add or say or a comment? Please raise your hand. Yes, Yvonne. I just want to clarify this idea of the shadow. Like what about that story was the shadow or like how did it show up for you the other day? I just want to clarify what what we actually mean when we use the word shadow. Great question. So when we talk about shadows in this work, we're talking about one specific dynamic and I will clarify that in a few moments. So um, one important piece is that this work um, is, and that's an important piece, is not therapy. So we're not doing therapy here. Yeah. So that when we have a severe trauma where our survival mechanism and our behavior is really challenged 
and trigger, then I recommend everyone to just like find really other professional work, a therapist, or just call me and do one-on-one -on -one session. <laughs> Little advertising on the side. Um, when we're talking about the shadows here in this work, um, it's it's not the shadows when you look into Jungian psychotherapy um, uh, about deeper psychological structures and how to heal them. So that's an important piece. And um, uh, so I guide you through that and it will click when we do it, okay? All right, Jana? I think what Yvonne is uh, asking for, and I'm not sure, is uh, what kind of shadow emerged from that situation? What was your reaction to that you were pressured to oh. eating this food? So you became a rebel in similar situations or, you know? Oh, thank you for yeah. clarifying that. Yvonne, is that your question? I, what I was looking to understand was what you meant generally with the shadow, but also in the example that you gave, how that came up for you, like what, what happened or that it triggered it back or like, where was the shadow piece in that story? I understand as a kid, but like now. All, all right, all right. Uh, so, so the shadow that came up is enduring and going along and um, um, not saying no, I'm not keeping my limits and my boundaries. The, the, the oppression story is behind that. Yeah? And we all have to a degree of oppression story. Um, does it answer that? How I, I can say one little word how it came up. My fridge was empty. I just had a cucumber in the fridge. I had no time. It was before a call. And I just put that cucumber in a juicer and I put something else in there. And I just let it stand there for five minutes. And that was the only breakfast I had. So I had no time doing anything else. And then I came back into the kitchen and my juice stand there. And this sentence pops into my awareness. You have ordered it, eat it in this way, in this tone. And then I had this internal dialogue, just like, oh, dad, hi, welcome. And, <laughs> and the story was just there. So, so, so there was no remorse or no, re, no regret. And I, and, and I just had this internal thing, just like, you asshole. And then, you know, bless you, you did the best you could. You were half the age I'm today now. I'm 52, he was 20, I don't know, four or 25 or something like that. And I mean, just, he did the best he could, I'm pretty sure. You know, but it felt for me in 50, in the age of 52, for the moment, the same way as it felt when it happened. All right, so ready for the, for the slides ahead of that. So there's a specific structure around that, um, that I used to combine. So everybody can see this picture of the direct and indirect pleasure map. Yeah, because when I see that, I just only see a limited amount of people and just want to just assure that all of you can see that. So the way how I unleash the shadows or the shadow work is that there's a specific part in your brain when you did the exercise about the hand when we started. And this is your so-called motor your motor cortex, where you move your hands, you know, whatever you do, your motor is sending impulses to your body, to your limbs and get your body moving. It's a very simple mechanism. Uh, so when you do that towards pleasure and when you feel pleasure, your sensory cortex is getting included into this dynamics. So it's everything that you feel related to pleasure and pain. In this case, we're asking you for pleasure because it has a different effect on the nervous system, on the body. And this is what we do when we're activating the hands. So what I would like to go into is when we feeling pleasure with our hands, and I just um, think I put that over here. When we're feeling pleasure with our hands, um, 
and we don't allow ourselves to feel pleasure with our hands. Maybe in the room or maybe with some object or maybe when we touching another person. So for some reason, this direct route of pleasure of feeling it is blocked somehow. So they are like roadblocks or obstacles. And let's catch, I don't know, about 10 of these obstacles. What is in the way for you to feel the sensory inflow when you are in action? And please unmute yourself and just speak it in. I try to write it down. What's your obstacle? The friction in the hand. So, so can you say a little bit more? What is what you mean the friction or the sensation? Um, I'm dyslexic. Please forgive me if I make mistakes. <laughs> yes, when when you take an object in the hands, as Bus guided us in the beginning, yeah. So you move your hands. What is an obstacle? What is difficult for you to feel? The sensation of pleasure. And that can be as well related when you touch another person, what is difficult for you to feel yourself when you touch on somebody. Everyone can relate with what other people say. <laughs> yeah, we could sit here, I promise you for an hour, and we could dig out a lot of stuff, what is in our nervous system. And we all have that. So this is not wrong, it's just part of the package. So, um, and that I want to acknowledge that this is part of the package, we all have that. So, um, keep that in mind. So, when this direct route is blocked with these reasons that we just have worked on, um, and we touching another person, that the inflow is literally gone. And all what is left is that we, and some of you said that already, that we want to figure out what's the reaction and the response of the other person. So that all of a sudden our action is not towards our pleasure anymore. All of a sudden our action starts to become um, towards the other person's reaction. So I call that uh, their pleasure is your pleasure. Yeah, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, so this is the so-called indirect route. There's nothing wrong about that, but what that is doing, it um, cuts our capability off to feel for ourselves. So our attention does not stay with, with our sensation. It's all of a sudden more important what the other person feel than we feel. So we neglect ourselves, we abandon our own capacity to feel, and we putting ourselves not only second, normally most people actually really cutting that off that they can't feel anything or very little. I, I guide you through that. Please bear with me. So, so this is more kind of, I just, try to wrap the core up and then we just go into the outer outer sides but thank you it's a good question and it is yes <laughs> so when you have this sensory root activated so all this nerve ending in your skin and this root is open while you are in action this is what this work is doing you learn here to put yourself first yeah. And whenever you go away or whenever you abandon yourself or neglect yourself, the challenge is to come back to the sense of your skin and feeling yourself. And that the indirect route is there as well and is an important feature of co-regulating with another person when we're touching each other, but it's a second and it is a bonus um, experience. It's on top, it's an extra. Does that make sense? Any question here? Anything that pops up? Anybody?
which one was. Yeah, so the direct root is our default. It's our number one. And when this one is in place and activated, the, the indirect route, that one here, where we getting a response from the other person is secondary, but is very important for neurological feedback loops and co-regulation. So we don't want to abandon the other person's Got response it. because it's important for our nervous system to feel and to co-regulate, but it's, an, it's secondary, it's an extra or it's a bonus. So this work, what this is doing with somatic consent, we taking radical responsibility to feel ourselves first that we start coming back into feelings because that brings us into our body and into our senses and into the present moment. Any other question? I can't see any hand. So if you have a question, please jump in. I take that as a no, then I continue. <laughs> so some of you have seen that. This is what I have created out of the wheel of consent and the dynamics based on that I have shown you just now. So it's the somatic consent engagement system. It's a similar structure, but it looks differently. There are some copyright issues, so I can't use it. I won't use it. So this is what I developed and I have developed it differently because it is a three-dimensional structure that allows us to uh, differentiate between the shadows, our base, our engagement zones and the internal interpersonal space of love and care um, where we make love, for example. However, I guess that each one of you loves to be in this place and every one of you loves to engage in the flow and loves to engage into um, the beauty of transformative energy. However, I imagine that each and one of you knows when something is getting triggered that we dropping faster in the shadow than we can actually think. Yeah, does it resonate? Do you know what I mean? Okay, so they, they coexist the shadows coexists with our reality and the perception of reality. Um, I could just say so much more, but I'm afraid of oh, that time is running away. So I just want to make it just as sharp as I can that you're just having the overview. So the shadows and the basement is the question of this call today. So I prepared that just to guide you into that. So when your base is the inflow and feeling while you are in action, um, you are in that place where you're taking full responsibility for your feelings and what you feel. So your action towards your pleasure, that's your base. It's your default. It's your foundation, what this entire course is about. When you go into the engagement zones, it is about the three minute game. It's about the dynamics of who is doing the action and who is that action for. So when you looking into the dynamic of the three minute game and into the engagement system, it's either your action or it's their action. And it's either for you or it's either for them. This is pretty much in the engagement zones between two people, all what is. When it is your action and it is for you and you have the direct route activated and you can feel for yourself, then you need to ask for permission. 
may I feel you? And, or you give permission when somebody else asks you. Yes, you may feel me. If it is somebody else's action and it is for you, you need an agreement. And this is making a request by, will you touch me on my shoulder? Will you massage my back? Yes, I will do that. So that this is the engagement zones where the three minute game is based on. So now here we go. And I put that as well here on the other side and let's do that again. So if you can't ask for what you want, so if you can't ask for permission, the may I question, or if you can't ask the agreement question, will you? Um, let's ask the first question. Why is it difficult for you to ask for what you want? All right. So same here. We could continue for a while. Yeah. So there are a million reasons why we don't ask for what we want. Now here comes the different question. What are you doing instead if you don't ask for what you want? So, so you, 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 you rather try to ask for what they rather want or? You know, again, we could just continue here. There are 10 or so. Um, and I've done that over the years in, I don't know, hundreds of workshops, this specific questions. And I have a list of probably 50, 60, 70, always repeating answers. They're always the same. When we don't ask for what we want, what are we doing instead? They're always the same and they belong to us. So now, so let's get to the next step into the shadows. If you can't ask what you want and what are you doing instead, if you don't have permission and you go in action for yourself, the shadow dynamic is here rape, stealing, perpetratory, abuse, violation and war in the bigger picture. Yeah? And we can bring that from the microcosmos to the macrocosmos or from the macrocosmos to the microcosmos. The other shadow, if there is no agreement and it is their action and it is for you, the shadow behaviors are expectations, exploitations, entitlement, lazy, the freeloader. I call that the best example is the pillow princess and the pillow queen. I'm just ready to be served, just do the right thing. I had that. <laughs> and sometimes I'm still a pillow princess. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the other side. It's about your limits and your boundaries. It's not what you want, it's what other people want. And that might include they just doing it already or they asking and you can't say no. So what is difficult for you? Why can't you say no? All right, so as well here, just have a little look. It's an intense list and we could just continue with that list for a while because there are a million reasons why we can't say no or why people 
don't say no. So here comes the other question. If you can't say no, what are you doing instead of saying no? So the shadows of if you have no limits and no boundaries and you can't say no, when it's somebody else's action for themselves, is the victim, is enduring, is the entire trauma spectrum going along passive or being passive and um, like the dormant, um, doormat. <laughs> then the shadows of um, your action for other people if you can't say no, if you have, don't have limits, is the typical, the burnout. So giving more than you actually have or can, or give something to get something, the martyr, the do-gooder, the slave, or the nice guy, or the nice girl. So do something to be liked. So this is what the, the somatic consent engagement system is literally providing is that when you can't ask for what you want, what are you doing instead? And if you can't say no, what are you doing instead? If this middle place here, the engagement dynamic is not existing, this is all how people engage. So when you now take, I wanna go back to this, um, what we did before, when you go back to this, um, what are you doing instead if you can't say no? And why is it difficult for you to say no? And then what are you doing if you can't ask for what you want? And I'll put that here on the other side again. I'll leave it there. Or um, why can't you ask for what you want? And then you just go, all the way back, why is it difficult to feel? They're pretty similar. So with all this stuff, when you start feeling yourself, all the shadows and all that stuff will come up. So they're getting triggered. And that's why this work sometimes can be uncomfortable and challenging. So I want to go to this picture here again. And um, uh, Anne-Marie said that. So the interesting thing is that when, when you feel a shadow, it does not mean the other person is in a shadow. Or if another person feels a shadow, it does not mean that you are in a shadow. The important piece is, Wherever in which shadow dynamic you put yourself, you will put the person you are engaging into the opposite shadow. The same with the other person. If the other person puts themselves in one shadow, they will put you into the opposite shadow if you are there or if you are not there. So first I would like to ask you, about the shadows and the dynamics that can you relate with them? Do you have them? We have all digged them out. So I would like to invite you for a few moments just to close your eyes and just feel into your shadows that this is pretty heavy, thick stuff. And we all needed to have this survival strategies, these mechanisms to adapt and to learn to survive and finding our way. And I would like to ask you, instead of judging and making them wrong in yourself, just to give you a little bit of gratitude and credit that this is a very intelligent mechanism that you have created. And when you give yourself a little bit of gratitude and a little bit of self-love for that, 
you might find a little bit compassion and love for other people's shadows because most people don't know better. So here comes the point. When you become a role model of yourself and your environment, you can ask for what you want and your discomfort will show up. And it's your personal individual choice to face it and ask anyway. Because when you can ask for what you want and put yourself first, you have to respect the other person's limits. And it is good to want and that your desire does not become less when somebody else is speaking their limit. All right. Bring your awareness back to the screen if you want to. Or dig a little bit into this muddy shadowish stuff <laughs> because it's an endless fountain <laughs> so when we go into the waking up the hands and i'll just say a few words about that when you start feeling yourself you're activating a part in your brain that's the insula it's a feeling center it's a, it's, it's a part that allows you to feel and, and, and having pleasure. And when you are in action at the same time, something is happening, you're bypassing a different part in your brain. And what happens is that the so-called um, parietal cortex, where all your sensory uh, memory is stored, your reactive part of your brain, starts to get triggered and every everything in your life where you have been touched against your will or where you touch somebody else against their will will come up so but when you ask somebody and when you can put yourself first and when you feel yourself with a verbal agreement where you have permission you can literally biohack this part of your brain It's just a miracle. Okay, any questions, anything that anybody would like to ask or to say? God, is that heavy? I can feel it. <laughs> anybody else can feel that, how heavy that is? The easiest way is you feel the object every day five minutes in the morning five minutes in the evening so so you do that five minutes in the morning in the evening for at least 21 days and you play at least once a week the three minute game with another person you ask somebody hey may i feel you and may i touch you there's no other way you cannot bypass that and you cannot substitute that as you said you cannot eat that away and you cannot watch YouTube videos to learn it. You have to do it. You have to ask somebody, can I feel you? And then you have to get vulnerable. And then you have to opening up your heart and feel gratitude that somebody else is giving you access to their body and you respect their limits. That will change your behavior. So right now I'm something's freezing here. I don't know. Can you still see me and hear me? All right. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know my something is just weird here on my side. Any other? So I seen Yanni, there was a question.
So when your inflow is open and becomes the default, every yes. emotional memory in your parental cortex, it is this part of your, it's your reactive mind where sensory information and memory is stored and as well communication will get realigned. It's so, so, so there's a saying um, that comes from Buckminster Fuller, uh, you can't fix an existing system or you can't change it by fixing it. You need to create a new one to make the old one obsolete. So the behavior of getting our needs met will always be there. But if we capable of doing it differently that we can make connection and feeling ourselves on somebody or with somebody, we don't need shadow behavior. We're getting our needs met through our action. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, uh, Janne had her hand up. It's like playing an instrument. You need a few hundred or thousands of hours to get your part of your brain that is responsible for re repetitive patterns to readjusting your, your um, uh, it's, it's like, um, what's that word? Uh, the I totally agree to that. And I, I, I can't emphasize that enough that this work is not replacing therapy. And I highly recommend each and one of you kind of doing your work wherever you can. But then the question is, what's the system that you want to recreate? And how do you want to engage with other people? And this is a very simple, very functional system, it's similar, like you just learn a new language, how you want to engage with people. But the, the shadow work and the healing will never stop. I totally agree. And on the journey, I recommend everyone to do some stuff like family constellation, do some breath work, do some deep de-armoring and body work, but do it with people who know. And sorry, Hamid, um, I just wanted to give it to Yvonne. She had her hands up. you try not to trick other people and you make sure that other people are informed. You do it in a playful way. You do it in an engaging way, in a way of an invitation that the other person doesn't think they're just getting tricked into something and you play the three minute game. And the best way is as the um, course Foundation of Somatic Consent is part of your work that you can share that with somebody and let other people find their truth in that and don't convince them into anything. Let them find their own body truth. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I totally would love, this is just fantastic. I love the openness right now. And we have a time agreement. So we are nearly on 90 minutes. And I would like you to um, take something in your hands Bring all your attention just for a moment into your mind, into your head, into the speed of your thoughts and all the questions and uncertainties and all the concepts that we shared. They're all welcome. And I invite you to feel into your body, into your breath, into your heartbeat and just touch that object just for a moment. Bring all your attention straight back there to your hands. Doesn't need to feel pleasant. Just notice what you notice with your hands. Notice your hands. And give yourself some credit 
about it's a complex system. Allow your body back to feel and you can go anytime back into this concept. But for now, I invite you just to feel for a moment, just your skin. And you might feel as well how difficult it is to focus your attention straight there in your skin. And I invite you to make everything that resonated during this sharing, make it yours. And everything that was challenging and difficult just revisit, revisit that on another location, on another point. There's a lot of information that you can tap into at any time. What counts is your inflow as a default. Again, again, again. Practice, practice, practice. Feeling, sensing. Hmm. And slowly with that in your hands, I invite you to bring your attention back to the screen. And we just might go a few minutes over. If you need to leave, please um, click the leave button. Um, otherwise, please stay on for another five minutes. And I would like just to hear each and one of you just two words of a checkout or three words, so that we respect the time of others um, in this time limit. How do you feel right now? Just one word and what resonates most? One or two words. And, uh, let's, I pick you up. So before we come to completion, a few words about on my side. As you have seen, I left Facebook. Uh, there's a transition time. Um, everything will happen on the, for a while on Telegram. And I hope you're all in this Telegram Foundation group. If you're not, um, please send me a message. I will uh, add you and I love to add you. If you have any question, just have a conversation there with other people. I'm just totally totally happy if that happens. The transition is we will end up in a while in Mighty Network where we have a specific group and I'm in the midst of creating that. So it will take a week or two. I will see as soon as possible. You're welcome at any time, any other um, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. And I will put as well in the, in the chat um, a, a few links um, about the upcoming foundation training if you want more on the 3rd of March. Some of you have done that already and everyone who has done that already can do the foundation online training uh, for half the price as a repeat. Um, so we have six weeks, two hours, it's a Wednesday afternoon where a specific fixed group will go for six weeks on a journey and explore this entire dynamics. If you feel like you're getting a ton out of that and you can't wait to share that with other people and you don't know how to explain that, um, there is a link there for, um, um, uh, how to say that, affiliation link where you can get 20% commission if you recommend the course to somebody else. So if they join, um, you will get a share of that. And that makes this thing alive, more people joining here. And the facilitator, like as some of you are here, will kind of start facilitating stuff with you. So please invite people, make that, sh just share it to the world because I think the world really needs it. Yeah. All right, um, thank you very much everyone for joining. And everyone who knows who stays, stays. And see, the one I see next Friday, I see on Friday. And 
everyone else I see on Saturday. Please take the links and have a beautiful Saturday and Sunday and enjoy yourself. Feel, feel a lot, feel it all. All right, bye.